Welcome inside the Mountain West Network Studio, where it is finally game week. Football season is upon us. Time to start talking about some Mountain West football. We brought in our analyst, Ted Sunquist to break down the Mountain Division games in week one. Let's jump right in. Boise State and Ole Miss. In typical Boise State fashion, they'll start off national TV, neutral site game in Atlanta, Thursday night, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Boise State has a new coaching staff led by Brian Harson. What does he need to do to keep Boise State in the national spotlight going forward? Well, Jesse, the great thing about Brian Harson, both as a player and a coach at Boise State prior to becoming head coach, is that he knows the tradition and culture of this Bronco program. He was Chris Peterson's offensive coordinator, so he understands the type of players mentally and physically, both on offense and defense, that they need to recruit in this system. And I'm sure that he will still run a similar system to his mentors. Now, keep, keep in mind the fact that Coach Harson got an opportunity to serve on the Texas staff under legendary coach Mac Brown before returning to Boise State. And it gives him some insight into a program that expects to compete for a shot at a national title every year and is willing to put forth the resources both in people and in finances to make sure that happens. So I'm sure some of those lessons that he learned at Texas will go a long way in keeping Boise State in the national picture. One guy I know they're going to lean on is Matt Miller, wide receiver, leads all active FBS players with a streak of 39 straight games with a reception. We'll see if he can make it 40 against Ole Miss. Again, that uh, kickoff, 8 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN Thursday night. Let's move on to Colorado State. They take on Colorado, interstate battle, a neutral site game in Denver at Sports Authority Field at Mile High. It's a Friday night game, 7 o'clock kickoff, be televised by Fox Sports 1. Colorado State, they challenged last year. They go to a bowl game for the first time in a while. Is this team primed and ready to now take the next step? Not only get to a bowl game, but compete for a Mountain West championship. Well, certainly CSU has turned things around quickly under Coach Jim Wackelwain, and usually you see great strides in a program during and after that third season. It takes some time to implement systems and recruit the types of players that you see that, you see that best fit your systems and the culture that you're working to build. What I saw out of the Rams in 2013 was a gritty, tough, physical style of play on both sides of the ball that I know Jim had promised that he would bring to Fort Collins. But 2014, you have to replace players like offensive center Weston Richburg, linebacker Shaquille Barrett, tight end Crockett Gilmore, and running back Capri Bibbs. That's a lot of leadership and production on both sides of the ball. But the added confidence that comes from getting back into the college bowl picture and then to beat a Pac-12 opponent in a shootout game with the Washington State Cougars, I think mentally, the Rams have closed the gap on both Boise State and Utah State in the hunt for the Mountain Division. Looking for some leadership in Fort Collins. You've got it in a quarterback. Garrett Grayson needs less than 2,000 yards passing to become CSU's all-time leading passer this year. Something to keep an eye on in Fort Collins going forward. Rams kick it off against the Buffs. 7 o'clock Mountain Time on Friday, televised on Fox Sports 1. Moving on to the Air Force Academy. They're hosting Nickel State in Week 1. It's a Saturday Kickoff, noon Mountain Time, be broadcast on ESPN3. Last season didn't go the way the Falcons would have liked. Two wins, ten losses. How do they bounce back? What do Troy Calhoun and company need to do to get Air Force back on track and get back to a bowl game like they've become, become accustomed to do under uh, Troy Calhoun? Two things, consistency at quarterback and the maturation of all those young players forced to contribute on defense in 2013. To go through four different starters at the quarterback position, that would bring down some of the top programs in the entire country. I don't care who you are, you need a guy under center that you can count on week to week to rally the troops and step up and make big plays when needed. The Falcons just didn't have that in 2013. Thus, they couldn't establish anything in the passing game, no rhythm, no consistency, no go-to presence to take the pressure off the run game that produced the lowest total yardage in Troy Calhoun's tenure at Air Force. Defensively, I mean, where do you start? There must be improvement in stopping the run and putting opponents in some more difficult third down situations. The Falcons were last in the conference last year in third down defense with opponents converting at almost a 60% clip. As a result, I thought Air Force, that was the reason why they weren't able to force many turnovers as well as put pressure on the quarterback. When you're giving up over five yards of carry and opponents are running against you at will, uh, you're not going to do very well on the Mountain West. You're not stopping many people from reaching the end zone. And the Falcons surrendered an average of 40 points in 2013. 2014 kicks off against Nickel State. For what it's worth, Mountain West teams 3-0 and all-time against Nickel State, winning by a combined score of 171 to 17. That includes a 72 to nothing game at Air Force a couple of years ago. Falcons and Nickel State. 
kick off at noon Mountain Time on ESPN3. Let's move on to Montana and Wyoming, a Rocky Mountain rivalry to be exact. Craig Bowl comes in from North Dakota State. As they get set to take on the Grizzlies, 2 o'clock Mountain Time, that'll be televised by Root Sports, also streamed live on the Mountain West Network outside of the Root Sports viewing area. Can he, as a new coach, replicate the same sort of success, at least to some degree, that he had at North Dakota State, where he won three national titles? Yeah, great question. And I think every school is going to have its own situations, scenarios, environment, and different set of problems and peculiarities. That said, it's the task of a new regime to come in and build a culture attractive to top, uh, uh, recruiting top college athletes and getting them to perform. Craig Bull did that for 11 seasons with the Bison. Three straight FCS national championships and two FBS national championships, remember, mm -hmm. with Nebraska as an assistant is going to bring a lot of cred to that Wyoming locker room. The Cowboys in this conference are lucky to have a coach of his stature. It's going to take a while before he gets things to where I know he wants them, recruiting, establishing his system and way of doing things. But we'll know by the month of October how the message is getting across to his current group of Cowboys. When they open up with always tough, like you said, Montana, take on rival Air Force, and then head on the road to national power Oregon, and then finish off those first five weeks against Big Ten's Michigan State. How Wyoming's players respond to the inevitable ups and downs of those tough first couple games there, I think is going to be a great indication if this is going to be a rebuilding year in Laramie, or if the Cowboys can make some immediate noise in the division under their new head coach. Always important to get off to a good start in the season. Wyoming has done that in 10 of the last 11 years. They have won a home opener. Find out if they can do that against the Grizzlies on Saturday, 2 o'clock kickoff on Root Sports. Move on to UTEP at New Mexico, Saturday, 6 o'clock Mountain Time. That will be on the Mountain West Network, powered by Campus Insiders. Ted Sunquist will be in the broadcast booth for that game. Bob Davey enters one of those years where you say, maybe this is the year that he takes the next step. How does he and the Lobos take that next significant step here as he tries to rebuild that program? You, you certainly expect that this is a year that they would do it. I think to come in and change just about everything the way Bob Davey has would be a monumental challenge for anyone, much less a former Notre Dame head coach. But these types of reclamation projects do take time, and the first two seasons have shown that the Lobos are on the brink of a breakthrough. New, Me New Mexico led the Mountain West in rushing last season and as a result have improved in their scoring per game by almost two touchdowns since Davey took over. Off the field, the football team has posted the highest GPA in back-to-back -back years in the football program's history. That says to me a lot about the overall message coming across from the coaching staff. That message eventually pays off on the field. Players listen, they pay attention to the little things that help you win in college football. 2014 hopes to see the defense catch up with the offense. The Lobos were just ahead of Air Force with only 10 takeaways and bested only the Falcons with 16 sacks. I think the defense can create more opportunities with pressure for an offense that is ball control oriented. There is a chance they could break through into a six win range and perhaps see a season like UNLV experienced in 2013. You mentioned offense and defense on the special teams. They got maybe the most electric kick returner in the entire country, Carlos Wiggins. Did take three back for touchdowns uh, last season. So he will be a big part of the Lobos in 2014. Again, UTEP in New Mexico, 6 o'clock on Saturday night. Mountain West Network, powered by Camp Campus Insiders, will have your broadcast. Finally, in the Mountain Division, the weekend rounds out with Utah State at Tennessee Sunday, a Sunday kickoff, 7 o'clock Eastern Time, that will be televised by the SEC Network. How important is a game like this for the Aggies going down to Tennessee? They've got all these expectations. They've got a leader in Chucky e. Keaton. How big is this game for them to set a table for a season that they really hope to enjoy. Well, look, anytime you get a chance to play a representative from the SEC, it's an opportunity to make some national noise. It's what you do with that opportunity that counts most. Going into Nayland Stadium in front of 100,000 volunteer fans is no easy task. If quarterback Chucky e. Keaton has any chance of making a run at the Heisman Trophy, it'll start with his performance in their opener on the road at Tennessee. That means ball control and no turnovers. The Vols have not lost a home opener in Knoxville, since 1994, so it's going to be a tall order for the Aggies. But defense has been the cornerstone at Utah State in the past, two se uh, past few seasons, and we've seen anything can happen in week one. There's been some inconsistency in Tennessee's offense throughout the preseason camp, and if the Aggies can force some turnovers and play with the reckless abandon that they've dis displayed in the past, they very well might be able to go do what Air Force did in 06 and take it down to the wire. 
That would give both the conference and Matt Wells' squad some well-deserved attention to start the 2014 season. Utah State has fared very well going into hostile environments. They did, lost to Auburn, Wisconsin, and USC by a combined nine points. Wow. Matt Wells would love to take that next step as they go into Knoxville to take on the balls again Sunday, 7 o'clock Eastern time, be televised by the SEC Network. Look forward to a fun weekend in week one of Mountain West football. We'll be back next week to talk about it with Ted Sunquist. For Ted, I'm Jesse Kurtz. Thanks for logging on to the Mountain West Network.